Dogs are awesome. They're called a human's best friend for a reason. However, every dog is different in terms of temperament. I admit it's so hard not to stop every dog you see and pet them. But not all dogs are friendly towards strangers or even towards other dogs. So if you happen to come across a reactive dog and unknowingly try to give it a big hug, you cause nothing but stress and fear. But don't worry, that's why dog owners came up with the color-coded bandana system to let you know whether you should keep your distance or you can go and say hello. And mm -hmm. as a bonus, those bandanas make their dogs look even cuter. So get ready for the Doggo Fashion Show. Our seven dog models will walk the runway as I explain to you what each color means. Let's start with white, shall we? Our first doggo model, Pausing, on the runway, is white. He's a big and cuddly 11-year-old golden retriever. But what does the white bandana around his neck mean? This might break your heart a bit, but that means he either has a hearing or sight problem, or he's totally deaf or blind. But again, that doesn't mean his owner loves him any less. Look how happy he is. And you'll be relieved to know that his condition has nothing to do with how long he'll live. He's got many years ahead to jump around and smell all the corners of the street. It only means you should approach him, keeping in mind that he might be startled by you. Okay, now that you know what white bandanas mean, how about we take a look at the colors of the rainbow in a row? The first is red. Red can mean many things for us two-legged folks, love, anger, or passion. But in the doggo world, it means danger. Take a look at Candy here. She's a four-year-old Rottweiler. You see her red bandana? That means she won't be so sweet to you if you approach and try to pet her. Even if you see her acting loving and cuddly towards her owners, don't be fooled. Her owner makes her wear the red bandana for a reason. They're warning you about her temperament issues. So, if you see other dogs wearing red bandanas like Candy here, beware and don't get too close. Avoid any interactions and give them space, for they're not to be messed with. The next color is orange. Look at Buddy, the six-year-old chocolate Labrador Retriever, owning the doggo runway with his orange bandana. That means he's friendly towards all humans, adults, children, you name it. However, he doesn't like to be around other dogs. A canine might not enjoy being around its peers for several reasons. First of all, it may have had a traumatic event in the past, like getting attacked by another dog. Secondly, it might be scared of other dogs due to size differences. Thirdly, it might see them as a threat to its status. Or it might simply be too protective of its owner and see other dogs as a threat to both its and its owner's safety. No matter the reason, you'll know when a dog is feeling scared or threatened by these behavioral signs. It might growl, expose its teeth, bark excessively, point its ears up, or even try to bite. If you're a dog owner who is facing these issues, but the reactions of your dog are not that intense, you can try to get your furry friend familiar with other dogs constantly so it gets desensitized. But if it acts uncontrollably, you can seek help from a professional dog behaviorist. Next up, we have the color of sunshine. Look at Daisy, the two-year-old King Charles Cavalier, walking the doggo runway sporting a yellow bandana. Yellow might seem like such a happy color to you, but that's not really the case in terms of the bandana color system. If a dog is wearing a yellow bandana, that tells you to approach it slowly and with care, because that means the dog is undergoing therapy or has some disabilities. On the other hand, it can also mean that the dog is anxious and nervous. It can be hard to predict how it will react and it can get edgy easily. So, you need to be gentle towards the dog, or be quiet and calm around it. That way you can show both the owner and the dog that you are a considerate dog lover, and you have respect towards whatever issues the dog might be undergoing. Keep in mind, 
It always helps to ask the owner first if it's okay to go near the dog and pet it. Our next dog model is a two-year-old standard poodle. Do you see his green bandana? It makes him look like a happy little leprechaun, right? So you probably guessed it right. If a dog is wearing a green bandana, that means it is friendly and sociable indeed. It loves to be petted, and it sure loves playing games. It'll do all sorts of funny things to entertain you, for that makes it truly happy. The green bandana means it is also attentive and curious. That's one goofy fella. You can enjoy activities like playing frisbee and rolling on the grass together with that cutie pie. By the way, the same goes for their behavior towards other animals. They act friendly and playful when they're around other dogs too. Still, you should always ask the owner if you can approach the dog, no matter how friendly it is. That's the golden rule of being a respectful dog lover. You know the saying, why so blue? Well, don't worry. If you see a blue bandana around a dog's neck, that doesn't mean it's going through some sad phase or anything. Just look at how happy Milo, the three-year-old husky, looks. His eyes certainly match his blue bandana. So, if a dog is wearing a blue bandana, that just means it is a working dog or one in training. Unlike companion dogs, working dogs are trained professionally to assist people in special tasks. There are many types of working dogs, and these include assistance dogs that are trained to help disabled people with certain daily tasks, search and rescue dogs, herding dogs, and detection or sniffer dogs. By the way, it is believed that dogs should perform tasks and always have something to do, whether they're companions or working dogs. This way, they will live much longer and happier because those tasks will keep them physically and mentally active. This will also help eliminate unwanted behaviors, such as excessive barking. Last but not least, we have Purple. Our last dog model is Lewis, the six-year-old pug. Unfortunately, she's a bit of an allergic furball. That's why she's wearing that purple bandana, to let you know that you shouldn't give her any food without asking her owner first. And actually, that goes for any dog, even if they don't have a purple bandana around their neck. You see, some foods that are safe for humans can be quite harmful to dogs. The list of the top 10 most dangerous foods for dogs is as follows. Avocados, grapes and raisins, garlic and onions, caffeinated drinks, macadamia nuts, cooked bones, salt, milk and other dairy products, artificial sweeteners, and candies and chocolate. On the other hand, foods like carrots, apples, cucumbers, blueberries, and green beans are some of the safer options. However, one important thing to be noted here is that while some food may be safe to eat for some dogs, others might still be allergic to them. For example, chicken is usually considered to be a safe food, but it can trigger some skin problems in certain dogs. That's where the purple bandana comes in handy. So, if you see a dog wearing one, just don't feed it anything without consulting its owner. Keep in mind, regardless of what color the dog's bandana is, never assume a dog's reaction, and always make sure to ask the dog's human if it's okay to interact with it. So, you have a new puppy, but the longer you're around him, the more you begin to wonder, is my dog weird? From licking the sofa to sniffing other dogs back there, your pet's behavior can leave you feeling a little confused. Let's look at some of the strangest things dogs do and figure out why they do them and if any of it is cause for concern. Why does my dog lick the furniture? You flop back down on the couch to watch a movie and find yourself sitting in a wet spot. No, Fido didn't have an accident. He's just been licking that exact spot for the last 20 minutes. The American Kennel Association says that in most cases, this isn't something to worry about. Often, a dog will lick furniture out of boredom. It's simply a way to pass the time when there's nothing else going on. The trick is to make sure your pet has plenty of toys and attention from you to keep it occupied. On the other hand, it might be licking furniture because of anxiety or stress. If there has been any significant change in its environment or routine, 
This can cause the animal to feel nervous and unsettled. Maybe your work schedule is different now, or someone new has moved into the house. The repetitive act of licking can be calming for a dog. As it adjusts, this should happen less often. If the licking is constant, aggressive, and hard to stop, a visit to the vet is in order. This may indicate a more serious issue. A professional can determine if there are any underlying health issues causing the behavior. The same is true when your dog constantly licks its paws. If it's a random occurrence, then there's little to worry about. But if it happens a lot, it may indicate pain or discomfort in that spot. Even if your pooch is otherwise healthy, too much licking can cause redness and soreness in the area. Why does my dog scratch the ground after going to the bathroom? Known as ground scratching, it's a very common thing to do for most canines. In fact, wolves and coyotes do it too. It helps to mark a dog's territory, letting others know that woof woof woof, which is dog for I was here. The scratching not only helps create a visual mark on the ground, but also releases pheromones from the special glands in its paws. Other dogs can smell and decipher these pheromones. And for you non-dog owners, those signs you put up to stop pooches from using your lawn as a bathroom, they don't work. Dogs can't read. My dog takes food from its bowl and eats it several feet away. That's not normal. Actually, it is. This is simply instinct kicking in. In the wild, dogs lived with other dogs in a group, or pack. When there was food, less dominant animals had to work a lot harder to claim something to eat. It often meant grabbing some meat and quickly moving to a safer spot to finish their meal in peace. Your dog is just repeating the behavior of its canine ancestors. The other possibility is noise. Some dogs can be simply scared of the clanging of their collar against a metal bowl, for example. Try changing the bowl to a plastic one to see if it makes a difference. But my dog also eats grass. Is it not feeling well? This is a more complicated situation. First, don't panic. Lots of dogs do it. Some of them eat grass for the same reason you add fiber to your diet. It provides additional roughage to the digestive system, which helps it function properly. Like licking furniture, it can also be a way to fight boredom. If a dog has nothing else to do, grabbing and pulling at those green pokey things may be the only way to distract itself. But eating grass, even if normal, is problematic. You don't know what's on that grass. It can be anything, for example, herbicides and pesticides. They can be very bad for your dog's health. Distract your pooch when it tries to munch on grass with a verbal cue and a treat for reinforcement. The other strange thing my pooch does is roll in stinky piles on the ground. Ugh, it's gross! Well, it might be icky to you, but it's natural for your dog. One possibility is that dogs, and wolves and coyotes, do this to conceal their natural scent. They're covering themselves in an odor that can hide them from rivals or a potential meal. It's also possible that they do it to bring the scent back to their pack to communicate something that they found. It's like sharing your day with your friends, but through smell instead of words. What are zoomies? According to veterinarian Sarah Wooten, zoomies are defined as short periods of hyperactivity. You know, when your dog literally zooms around like crazy for a bit, then calms down and gets back to normal. The official term for this behavior is FRAP, frenetic random activity periods. But zoomies is a lot more fun to say. Dogs do this because of pent-up energy that just needs to come out. Maybe they've been alone all day or just had a bath. Now free, they want to celebrate. It's often a sign of a very happy pet. The only concern about zoomies is that Fido might bang into someone or something and get hurt. You can redirect him to a safer area if needed. Also, increasing the amount of exercise and mental stimulation your pooch gets throughout the day can reduce these moments of wild abandon. Okay, but why do dogs sniff each other back there? This is probably the behavior we're most familiar with. It seems strange when dogs do it with other dogs and embarrassing when they do it to your mother-in-law. But every dog does it. These animals can gather a lot of information through their nose. In fact, their sense of smell can be nearly 100,000 times better than ours because dogs have 150 million olfactory receptors in their nose. 
we only have 5 million. And 30% of a dog's brain is specifically dedicated to processing odors. Based on the smell, the dog can quickly determine everything from gender to mood to friendliness to health. It's almost like a superpower. I always let a strange dog sniff my hand first. Dog training company Eureka Dog Services says this is a terrible thing to do. It can actually make some dogs feel threatened. And no wonder. You just tower over them and shove your hand into their face. First, ask the owner for permission. If you get the okay, angle your body and face away from the animal at a 45 degree angle and smile. Then give the animal time to approach you. The dog may lean forward, keeping its back paws permanently planted. This is just in case you're dangerous. This way, it can quickly pull away from you if needed. My dog must like people. It's always asking for belly rubs. Although your dog might love getting scratches on his tum-tum, this behavior says more than you realize. When Fido does it for you, his owner, he's putting himself into a very vulnerable position. By doing so, he's saying he trusts you. But when a pooch does it to a stranger or an unfamiliar dog, it's an act of submission. It's basically saying that it isn't going to be a threat. This way, a dog is trying to avoid confrontation. As a pet owner, you'll be able to understand your dog's body language. This will help you determine if it is safe for a stranger to approach or if your dog would rather be left alone. One telltale sign is your dog's, well, tail. If your pet holds its tail in a natural position, such as loosely down by its legs, the animal is relaxed. If the tail is lifted and wagging, it's not necessarily a sign of happiness. It really means your dog is excited about something. A wagging tail that is held a little further back indicates a cautious curiosity. The dog is interested in something, but not yet sure if it's safe. And a tail tight between its legs? This is often a sign that your dog is scared or nervous. It's best to remove your pet from a potentially bad situation so it doesn't feel threatened. A big wag, often combined with a body wiggle, is when you really know you have a happy pet. My dog sometimes moves and barks in its sleep. Do dogs dream? Just like humans, dogs do enter a phase of sleep called REM, or rapid eye movement. This is the time when it's believed people dream. During REM, your mind is processing the day's events. It's likely the same for your pet. So when you see your dog's legs kicking as if it's running, that's probably what it's doing in its dream. And since you're such a big part of its life, it's probably even dreaming about you. Has someone ever been weirdly interested in your dog and asked if they could take a picture of them? Did you notice that they seemed more interested in getting a clear picture of your dog's collar than the dog itself? This person was probably trying to access private information about you. This could lead to a stranger finding out your phone number or where you live. It's easy at places such as dog parks to become too relaxed and end up letting your guard down when it comes to strangers. So be mindful of the information your dog's collar reveals. Now let's look at some other potentially life-saving tips. Let's stick with dogs for starters. If you ever come across one wearing a vest saying service dog, you should take a moment to examine if its owner is nearby. If you find that the dog is by itself, you should stay with it. If it leaves the area, you should follow it. The dog may just lead you back to someone in desperate need of help. This is why it came and found you in the first place. These dogs are trained to support disabled people and people with medical conditions in a variety of ways. These lovable animals change and often save the lives of their owners and their families. If you ever wake up in the middle of the night and think you smell gas, there's one thing you shouldn't do. Don't turn on the lights. A spark from the light switch could cause a fire. Don't use your phone indoors. It can also cause a spark easily. And if you live in an apartment, don't use the door-controlled entry system. If you're ever at home and suddenly smell fish, you need to quickly check if someone else in the house is preparing a lovely meal for you. If nobody's in the kitchen, then you should quickly get out of the house. In 9 out of 10 cases, a fishy smell in your home means the electrical components are overheating. If you do come across this smell, ensure there's no fire and then call an electrician immediately. 
Manufacturers use heat-resistant chemicals for the production of most wires and circuit breakers. If these same wires or outlets overheat, the chemicals they're made of release a weird odor that smells strangely like fish. If you happen to see a tornado and it looks like it's not moving, I've got some bad news for you. This more than likely means it's heading right for you. Although tornadoes usually move from southwest to northeast, they also move towards the east, the southeast, the north, and even the northwest. The most extreme tornadoes can reach speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. So if you see one, it's the right time for a quick exit, whether the tornado is moving or not. Have you ever thought about what you'd do if you found yourself beneath an avalanche? Besides panic, of course, I've got a recommendation. You should spit. I can explain. <laughs> Your saliva will drop in the same direction as gravity goes, and you can simply dig the opposite way. It won't be easy, but it can save your life, so... If you don't immediately try to dig out of the snow, whatever you do, don't begin to eat large amounts of snow while still beneath. It doesn't matter how thirsty you are, too much cold ice in your stomach won't do you any good. Just focus on escaping. A large avalanche can have a volume of about 40 Olympic swimming pools and be over one mile long. The worst of them have the potential to cause some pretty catastrophic destruction, affecting thousands of lives. If you ever happen to walk upon a beehive and disturb it, making its residents chase you, here's what not to do. Don't jump into the water thinking you've just outsmarted them. They'll simply wait for you to resurface by the water. So what should you do? Well, just run away as fast as your feet will carry you. Eventually, the bees and wasps will give up and end the chase. A beehive typically has anywhere between 20,000 and 80,000 bees inside. Being chased by one bee when you're out and about, trying to enjoy ice cream, is bad enough. 20,000 sounds like an unimaginable nightmare. If you come across a beautiful, vivid, and colorful animal in the wild, there's a strong chance it's poisonous. So, in the bizarre event you're feeling extremely peckish, don't eat it! This is a lesson that countless hungry animals in the wild would have wished somebody had told them before they ate that majestically colorful frog. The color serves as both camouflage and a direct warning to other animals that the wearer of the skin is poisonous. This process is called aposematism. Funnily enough, the panther chameleon is widely considered to be the most colorful reptile in the world, but it's not poisonous. As long as you're not being chased by bees or wasps, it's now okay to jump into the water, but once you're in there, watch out for what looks like square waves. If you see those, you need to get back out of the water straight away. Sorry. These square waves are often dangerously strong currents that could drag you under the water. If you look at these waves from above, it might seem like there's a grid underwater that's forming square-shaped ripples. Square waves don't happen because of some process below the water. They are a result of the intersection of two seas, also known as cross sea or grid waves. Okay, but what if the water conditions are great, but you find yourself being dragged in there by an alligator? A quick cheat code, go for their nose and eyes, it will make them release you immediately. Okay, maybe let's just give up on trying to go for a swim today. Let's head for a hike instead. When going for walks across mountains and hills, you can also run into some wildlife. One of them you don't want to have a meet and greet with is a mountain lion. If you do, here's a tip that could really help you out. Never turn your back on it. Carefully walk backwards. Cats are ambush predators, so once you turn around, they see it as the best time to attack you. Do you think you can actually run away from this vicious oversized kitten? Mountain lions can reach running speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. Good luck trying to escape from that on foot. The same tip will also apply to cougars, red lions, catamounts, and American lions. Why? Because these are all different names for mountain lions. In fact, they have more different names than any other animal in the world. Not a cat person? We've already talked about dogs. So, how about wolves? Well, these guys will only go after you if you start running away from them. It will take some serious guts to stand your ground against a wolf pack. But, eventually, they'll leave you alone. 
This does sound quite scary, but like with the mountain lion, do you really fancy trying to run away from a hungry pack of wolves? These packs can contain up to 36 members. They're also able to reach speeds of up to 38 miles per hour. They have great endurance and can travel comfortably over long distances at 5 miles per hour. If you encounter animals like wolves and mountain lions, there's a strong chance you're deep in the wilderness. Your first thought might not be to grab your phone and call for help if you face a dangerous animal. This may be for a number of reasons. You're too frightened to move, or you believe that you don't have any phone reception, so it's pointless trying. I have good news! You can always dial 911 or the emergency phone number for the country you're in, even if you have no bars. In an emergency, your phone will connect to any nearby cell tower as long as it has a battery in it. The signal travels in exactly the same way a regular call goes with your usual network signal and towers. This time, however, it just goes through a network that's not your own. Since it's not your network, you cannot make any other calls. But okay, your best friend probably won't be able to help that much should you ever come face to face with a hungry wolf. I hope you never have to use any of these life-saving tips, but it's always good to know them, right?